So welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to this interview with the St. Vincent de Paul Society, uh, going on the Well of Hope and on uh, YouTube. Um, today, again, I am absolutely delighted to be joined by another member of SVP staff, uh, and welcome, Brian. Hello, Alec. Good. It's nice good to have to you see with you. us. <laughs> so I'll let you introduce yourself in, uh, in, in just a second, but Brian's our bene beneficiary support officer, I've got to say it right, uh, and Brian does a lot to support all the needy people that we that get in touch with us, but I'll let you explain a little bit about that, Brian. Um, but yeah, so this is just going to be another quick interview. We're going to try and tell you a little bit about what's available in terms of what the SVP has to offer for those who do actually need support, and if you remember how you can... T uh, get into that support. We're going to try and go through a little bit of that with you, with you, Brian, today. If that's okay. So, Brian, if you if you would like to introduce yourself, tell us a little bit about yourself. Um, go for it. Yes, I work at the national office in London normally, working from home now at the moment. And as Alec, Alec, as you were saying, my main role is to support beneficiaries uh, and the people that get in touch with us that are in need of help. And another part of my job is to support conference members to access um, various resources and especially um, sources of funding. Um, and I can say a bit more about that later, about the, the new special emergency fund which we have. Um, working from home, so I'm looking out into my garden, speaking to you over Zoom and uh, the, the spring weather is, has, has made all the difference really during this lockdown. The sun, the sun is out, um, but we're not out, but the sun is out. <laughs> so I mean, yeah, I suppose yeah. it, it's, I mean, it, it just makes exercise more tempting. That's what it does. Yeah. It just makes, you know, we're going to be such a thin country after this. It's going to be incredible. A bit, well, that's the way to fight obesity. What, one of the great things, um, well, one of the blessings that's come out of this situation, um, it's serious and difficult, of course, is that it, it seems to be bringing the best out of people. Uh, there's a lot of goodwill to do our bit to help limit the spread of the virus and uh, to do what's necessary to, to get things back to normal. Yeah, I think we're both quite lucky in, in the roles that we have with the SVP in the fact that we get to see a lot of, uh, well, a lot of the good hearted stuff that happens. You know, I've been getting stories in from all over the country and, and you yourself, you're in touch with members uh, who are trying to help people that get in touch. But I think we're, we're both very lucky in the fact that we do get to see a, a great amount of the good work that's going on at the moment. Uh, and so little of the, the sadness in a way, actually, because of the, of the roles we have, it's, it's a, it's a, it's, yeah, we're very lucky actually, aren't we? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've been really impressed by how creatively conferences have responded to the crisis. Yeah, um, as you can see on the on this section of the website, the Well of Hope. Yeah, I mean it's been yeah it's been it's been fantastic actually. It really has. It really has. Mm. Um, so, um, Brian, I'll ask you. So, uh, what have you been up to with the SVP uh, since the outbreak of COVID nineteen? Just tell us a little bit about some of the things that have progressed as time's gone on. So, yeah, so so the normal and under normal circumstances, um, I receive requests for, for help, and these are quite often self referrals um, from people who don't know who to turn to. Um, they they'd like help, but they they don't know how to to contact their local SVP possibly. And then there's um, there's other referrals we get from agencies um, or um, teachers, or even family members. <clears throat> And the way people get in touch is we have an online form on websites where people can request help. And we also receive requests by telephone. And since, since we've had to move out of the office, we, we've still been keeping these channels open. So the website's there. Um, and people can also request help by contacting uh, my work mobile or leaving a message on it. And we'll um, we'll hopefully leave those details uh, uh, next to this video. And yeah. as I was as I was saying earlier, every conference has had to adapt uh, to to the new situation. And the people watching this will will know from the, from their experience, they've had to change the way they uh, keep in touch with their uh, with with the people they support. So I've heard 
most conferences that I know about have ma been maintaining their befriending commitments via phone calls. Um, in other cases where people can get out and about, um, where, where members are able to, to uh, leave their homes, they've been helping with shopping. Uh, they've been filling in the various gaps that have been left by services that have had to close. Uh, so, so a big example of this is food banks. Um, and uh, some conferences have been stepping into to that role, um, delivering food um, on behalf of the, the food bank that, that's had to close. So where it's possible for, for members to go out, they, they've, been, they've been responding creatively and, and they're still actively seeking out those in need and offering a helping hand, which is it's really impressive. Yeah, I mean, so we heard from Father Gerard a couple of weeks ago uh, and he turned his presbytery into a food bank um, because the food bank, the local food bank had to close, um, but yet the need is ever growing. Uh, as you showed us earlier, um, I think you were saying the request for food related support had gone up massively. Yes, um, that's, that's very true. Uh, normally, um, I say the requests we get through the office the top request is usually either befriending or furniture, one of those two. But in the last month, um, the, the request for food parcels has doubled the, the request for, for furniture. So it's gone right up in the, in the bar chart. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I mean, I suppose it's, I mean, it is to be expected, isn't it really? Um, yeah, exactly. People, people can't get out there restricted in, in, um, their access to shops. So, um, yeah, and the food banks close yeah. as well. What, what I think I've noticed as the weeks have gone on is in the first couple of weeks, it was those initial people that had to completely self-isolate, that had to shield. They needed the support instantly because the government had forced them to stay inside. Well, not forced them, but they you know, had to stay inside. They couldn't leave. They couldn't go shopping. And so that was very much the need to begin with. But yeah. now what I'm seeing is it's families. Uh, we're seeing lots of school uh, work having to be done with schools, work having to be done with families, mm -hmm. with, with children that have either where the parents have, have been furloughed and have got less money or where they've actually lost their jobs entirely. And that yeah. is now where I'm seeing, that's what I'm seeing yes. coming in now. Yeah. And, and in fact, um, when I speak about the special funds in a minute, uh, related to that, there's been quite a few requests from conferences for extra funds to help with these needs. Um, that have come about due to the schools closing. And, yeah, yeah. Because yeah, so, free school meals have gone, haven't they? Free exactly, school meals have gone. Yeah. 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 So it's um yeah. Well, anyway, so well, you, you move me nicely on to the next question. Um, so if you could tell us a little bit about some of the resources uh, and funds the SVP does currently have available, uh, and maybe just uh, explain a little bit about what each is for. And well, I mean, you're the yeah. expert. You, you tell us what. But, tell us so, what the, so the usual streams of funding for each conference. Um, the main one is through the church and they've all closed. So uh, the, the, usual, the usual means of raising funds has, has um, been, been closed off for the time being, yet we still have work to do. So the, the idea behind the new emergency fund is for it to be available and for it to be easy to apply for so that conferences can be supported uh, and, and keep the, the, the money um, that they need coming in to, to, to um, help the people that, that, they, um, that, that are in need. So this um, new fund, this emergency fund is called the COVID-19 emergency fund and conferences can apply for up to 500 pounds a time. Um, and the application is all online. So the aim is to uh, when an application comes in is to get a decision within two working days. So we're, we're trying to turn over the, the applications quickly. So I'd really encourage conferences that the, um, the fund is there. Um, and if you're in need of funds, then send me an email or give me a call and inquire about it and uh, make an application. So, so what, what, what sort of things are you seeing coming in? Um, or what, what's the sort of, uh, what, what, what sort of, is there, is there anything that they shouldn't apply for funding for, or what's the sort of guidance around actually what it's, you know, it's quite general. The guidance is quite general actually. because I think it's to encourage, 
uh, applications um, that really the, the general guideline is that if, if you want to, to do Vincentian work, but your, the, the, the normal source of funding that you would use for that is, is not there, then that's a reason to apply. So, mm -hmm. okay. the, yeah. So I think that, that, that most um, work activities that, that you're involved in, services you're involved in during the time of pandemic, they would be eligible so long as they meet the, the usual Vincentian criteria. Brilliant. So, yeah. yeah, I mean, what we were saying earlier, we've seen a lot of um, DCs move money around within DCs and central councils move money around central councils. But actually, you know, that that's not the only source of funding. If you are, if you do need money, then then these funds are available. Uh, mm. and, and that's this is exactly what they're for as well. They're for this, aren't they? Yep. And and the the other special funds, which are always there, even outside of the, the, the time of emergency that we're in, uh, the regular special funds, funds they're all still open for applications as well so they have more specific criteria relating to different areas of need so um you have the young family fund for example which is quite self-explanatory it's for young families in need uh, there's other funds like the asylum seekers fund which helps uh, conferences support um, cases where someone um, is an as asylum seeker so there are all these other special funds too and um i can i can give more details if you get in touch with me Spot on, spot on. And so that, that's the best thing to either fill out that online application or just to give you a ring or send an email, I guess. Yeah. That would be yep, the best thing. Absolutely. Spot on, spot on. Um, so is there, is there any sort of advice you might have for uh, members in either getting these funds or in just generally helping those in need at, at the moment, at the moment? Well, um, I'm not sure what, what more I can say other than I... I'm in admiration of all our members for their dedication, the beautiful work of service that, that all our members do. I absolutely love hearing from our members. So if you need any assistance from me or from anyone at the office, then do get in touch and, and I'll try and point you in the right direction. And above all, be prudent and don't, don't take unnecessary risks. Um, so that's that's my advice yeah <laughs> i said toe in the party line there we like that <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah i mean i suppose i mean that is the number one at the moment um yeah is, is 100 percent looking after yourself i remember when i was doing first aid when i was a lot younger the first thing you always do when you look into a, a, a first aid example is you look for danger and you look for risks to yourself before you then try and help and i think that's exactly the same principle here you make yourself safe and then you can help other people otherwise yeah, yeah. you just become a, a you know you make the situation worse yeah um, it, it, that's the honest truth the honest truth um yeah. okay so we'll move you on last question if you're ready unless there's anything else you'd like to say on, on special funds yeah special funds any questions get in touch with me spot on yeah spot on, we love they're, it. We they're love there it. and they need to be used <laughs> spend our money spend our money yeah. Yeah. <laughs> don't say that too loudly don't say that too loudly <laughs> um okay so uh, brian do you have any uh do you have a message or any sort of spiritual advice that you uh, that you might have for those who are either struggling or starting to lose hope uh, during this crisis? Yeah, my suggestion would be to reach out to others in a spirit of prayer, and especially for um, all the members of the SVP, we need to support each other um, by finding opportunities to pray together. Uh, it's a great source of strength. It supports everything that we do as a society. We can't grow or be sustained without prayer. And especially during uh, this time, we need, we need each other's support. One of the purposes of the conference, as Blessed Frederick saw it, was mutual support in carrying out our lives as Christians. So we need to keep up that spirit and keep up the prayers together. So find opportunities to meet over Zoom, or over the phone to pray together. I think that's very much the spirit of, of Blessed Frederick. Mm. Oh, that's wonderful words, wonderful words. And, mm. you know, so true as well. Um, you know, how, how, can we, how can we get by without, without talking? Uh, and when everything comes from God, how can we get by without talking to God? So it's, mm. yeah, no, very, very true, very true. Um, well, lovely. Thank you very much, Brian, 
Uh, it's been an absolute pleasure having you, actually. Um, not, the, not that I ever expected it. Lovely, lovely to talk to you, Alec. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he's lying, he's lying. Uh, um, so, yes, thank you very much. And we'll let you get back to what is, uh, I know, extremely busy work. Um, so, thank you, thank you. Um, yeah, yeah. Wonderful. So, so, ladies and gentlemen, whether you have uh, found this recording through YouTube or through the Well of Hope, uh, please do continue to enjoy the other videos and resources on here that we have created. Um, if you are still interested in the work of the St Vincent Paul Society uh, and would like to know more, then please do take a closer look at our website. Uh, if you would also like in some way to access any of these special funds that we've been talking about, or you're a member and you're just more interested uh, in the work that Brian does, then please do get in touch. Uh, we'll try and include the uh, Brian's contact details on, on the thumbnail uh, for this, this recording, so you should see that there. Um, but it also, if you would like to, to make a donation, then you can also do that through our website, or you can just give us a ring. Uh, either's, either's good. Um, but please know that you are all still in our thoughts and prayers, uh, and especially all the frontline workers at the moment. Uh, prayer knits us all together, um, and it's, it allows God to, to work truly great wonders through us. So please do also pray for us and pray for Brian as he does, uh, well, as he continues his fantastic work. So yes, thank you very much for joining us and have a great day. Thank you very much. Bye.